My name is Alan Manning. I'm a professor of economics here at LSE, and I also work in the Centre for Economic Performance, one of our research centres. Well, we first got interested in the minimum wage about 20 years ago, and the basic problem then was that we had had a big rise in, in inequality in the UK since about 1980. And in particular, those people, the lowest earners in the labour market, have been doing much, much worse than anybody else. So one important question is actually, who are the minimum wage workers? So many people think they're just sort of teenagers living at home, trying to earn a little bit of extra money. But actually, there are quite a large number of people, and an increasing number, for whom they face the prospect of being a minimum wage worker pretty much all their working lives. So, for example, one of the biggest um, sectors employing low-wage workers is, is the social care sector. And for those workers, this is often the main, if not the only, source of household income. So it's really important. These are the people who are doing very important work, but they just don't get rewarded by our, our system. But the government at the time was actually arguing that it wanted to get rid of the system of minimum wages that we did have at the time, arguing that if you artificially raise wages above the market level, that all that's going to happen is that it's going to destroy jobs. And so it's going to end up harming those it actually sets out to help. So the first piece of work we did on, on the minimum wage was actually looking at was that true? Was it true that the minimum wages we had in the UK at that time harmed employment? And we found that, that it didn't. And that was in line also with other research that was being done in the United States at the time. Now, that research initially didn't really go very far because the Conservative Party won the 1992 election and went ahead with its promise to abolish the minimum wages that we had. But when we came a few years later to Tony Blair's win in 1997, the Labour Party then was committed to raising, uh, introducing a national minimum wage for the first time in the UK. And in justifying that policy, it relied quite heavily on the research that we had done five years before. I mean, it was very controversial at the time. There were those who said that this was actually going to cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of jobs. So when we look back now, we think the minimum wage is, is really just accepted as part of the furniture, but in those days it was really very, very controversial. So it, we, we were also, we played an important part in sort of making the case for a minimum wage. And then when the minimum wage came to be introduced in 1999, um, I, together with other members of the Centre for Economic Performance, notably Steve Machin, Richard Dickens and David Metcalf, who actually was one of the members of the first Low Pay Commission, we, we started doing research on what the effect actu actually was. And we were not alone in that, but again, we came to the conclusion that the fears that it was going to cost lots of jobs just weren't justified. They were, so the minimum wage ended up helping low paid workers. For the first time in almost 20 years, we saw a falling wage inequality at the bottom. And we think the minimum wage was because, because of that. So over time, this evidence, you know, lots of people looked at the evidence and basically all the main political parties came to the view that actually they thought the minimum wage was a good thing. So it was, was here, to, here to stay. And so now we're in a situation going into a general election next year where all the three main parties seem to be falling over themselves trying to um, say we're going to do more about the minimum wage. But I mean here at CP we've, we've been continuing our, our research into it. So although the initial research was mostly about the effects on employment, our more recent research has been about what is the effect on productivity and profit. John Van Rienen and Steve Machin have been doing that. And I've been doing quite a lot of work on, on, wage, in, on wage inequality. Um, and we're still trying to sort of have an impact on things. So for example, um, I was part of an expert panel put together um, earlier this year by the Resolution Foundation to think about ways in which we could perhaps put new, rejuvenate uh, the national minimum wage. It's now 15 years old, but it's not really a rebellious teenager. It's more become a little bit prematurely middle-aged. And we were trying to think about ways in which we could push it forward. To, it's done good, but could it do, do more good? And then also we see not just in the UK, we see impact in, in other countries. So the UK experience um, has not been the only evidence on the impact of minimum wages, but 
um, it's been an important part because we went from having no minimum wage to having one, which is a very clean sort of policy change. So Germany is about to introduce a national minimum wage for the first time. And in thinking about what the effects of that likely to be, they've looked to the UK experience and the research that's been done as, at LSE has been an important part of that. And we see in other parts of the world this also happening. So Hong Kong, which we think of as being a country which is really rather uh, committed to sort of free markets, introduced a minimum wage uh, a number of years ago. And again, the UK experience and LSE research was part of the evidence base cited, cited for doing that. So in some sense, we've, we've had some impact, we like to think, um, but the work is not yet done.